some people would say there was a number of stones because in the 19th century they wrote many fairy tales and other things to you know to sell the books in the 1920s and 30s we went through this before where they're selling fake bibles with the date 16th century 17th century anything you see business is business Hi, Raphael. Yes. Um, what's new? <laughs> well, I guess, you know, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you well. Everyone's been watching the news. I don't know what's new. The question is what's new. The question is what's real, you know, so we'll, we'll find out hopefully. Okay. Yes. Let's, let's have a look at this. Yes. On the 19th of September last year. Yes. Azerbaijan. Yes. Um, um, had a conflict in Nagorno-Karabakh, yes? The, some media people will say Azerbaijan invaded um, Armenia, but, um, you know, um, Azerbaijan says Karabakh belongs to it. Armenia, some Armenians will say it belongs to Armenians. The conflict is a sad conflict. Yes, um, nobody's talking about it. Yes, um, you know, up to two million people had to leave their homes in the last 20 years. Yes, just a, a hundred thousand people in um, last year had to leave, um, Armenians had to leave their homes. And um, the thing is, um, you know, some people say 50,000. Yes, um, depending on which side you're on. But these things are very sad. But if we want to understand European history and American history, we are not going to understand anything without understanding what's going on in the Middle East right now. Armenia, Azerbaijan is basically the Middle East. Some people will say the Caucasus, same thing, it's in that region. Now, why to, now the first thing is September the 19th. And um, the thing is, many people will point out, yes, that um, of course there are American weapons and um, European weapons that got supplied to Azerbaijan through Israel. Some people will say up to a quarter of the weapons. Some people will say 70% of the weapons came through through Israel, but from the West. Now, if we look at if we look at when um, Azerbaijan attacked Armenian forces in Karabakh, and Armenia denies their Armenian forces, but I'm um, separatist. <laughs> Same thing. Um, yes. You know, let's have a look. Um, um, 19 days later, we arrive at October the 7th. Yes. And um, what do you call it? Notice it was September the 19th. Notice that Israel is involved in the Azerbaijan conflict. And then 19 days later, on October the 7th, we mysteriously see James Bond type parachute guys, um, you know, invading Israel from um, um, Gaza. You see? Right. Yes. Ah, this thing shows um, how many people expelled. 750,000, up to, up to half a million Armenians. It's just a big joke. So, so now the thing is, if um, anybody wants to understand um, what is going on, yes, why was it 19 days later? Yes, you know, October seven um you know hamas why was it 19 days later why was the other one on the 19th yes so so um uh, many many people are not investigating these things yes why don't you find it suspicious very suspicious now the thing is there are some people um because obviously they don't use their brains very well that's what i say um, uh, um, because um, first, Fomenko was a mathematician. Yes. So the thing is, I showed people that, um, uh, um, you know, uh, they, they say the world order or the new world order is run by the Kabbal or the Kabbalah, which comes from the word cube and the word Allah. Yes. Now, if we have a look at a cube, yes, based on the flower of life, there's 19 points. Of course, there's other numbers like seven or six and then um, other numbers. So when you put all these numbers together, yes, they're using different numbers, or you could put the numbers in different positions on the cube, depending on what you want to do and how you're going to do it. Yes, so if you don't understand 
um, you know, the 19 and the concept of 19 from the alpha and the omega, you're not going to understand other things. And it's not just 19, but um, the thing is, it's all the numbers in the spectrum are from one to nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then you invent all the numbers from there. Or otherwise, um, uh, um, you're not going to um, uh, under understand um, how numbers work. So now um, let's go to, to a few more suspicious events last year. Well, to most people, they will be suspicious, but to me, they're just regular things. It, it, um, you know, if you understand uh, mathematics, yes. So um, for example, they told us that last year, India went to the moon, yes. So um, the thing is, um, you know, um, Let's have a look, and many people yeah, right. are um, saying, "Hey, it... <laughs> yeah, that was such yes. a, that, no, it was so great." I deliberately watched it live, and yeah, they had a great, uh, great photos and great animation, which they showed. Everyone should check it out. Ah, ah in India, they watched it live. Now, let me show you about the live thing. This is um, um, such a joke. Uh, bef and before we get to India, wait, let me just show you a few things. Last year, we had the earthquake in Morocco yes um, now when you look at the earthquake story in Morocco what we have is is um what do you call it the earthquake yes happened at um 11 minutes uh, past 11 yes and then the aftershock was exactly 19 minutes later people were there people recorded it how is this possible is this a man-made event? Were the aftershocks and the earthquakes done on purpose? I mean, all you've got to do is just put a device in the ground. Yes, and then um, when we have a look at the earthquake, the earthquake that happened previous to this earthquake in Morocco was exactly how many years before Raphael? 15 oh. years. Uh, no, and it wasn't 20 years, but it was 19 years. Mm -hmm. 19 years before yes so the thing is when when somebody looks at these things they're you know um they're totally suspicious yes so the thing is if you are not going to understand these things you are not going to understand the kabbalah yes or the kaaba of allah yes so um these things are um um very important it, it, it's like um it, it's just important but um Let's now go back to India going to the moon. Now, what do you make of this picture? <laughs> yeah, I just think it's it's amazing, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm not, you know, not, I mean, even NASA, you know, has bad animations. I usually prefer the Hollywood animations and stuff and things. So, yeah, it's just ridiculous. I don't know. Ah. Yes, <laughs> Hollywood. Okay, let's get down to the um, nitty gritty and the details of India to the moon. Um, well, um, wait, before we get down to the nitty gritty, it's because some people will think, it's because um, some people will think we can make an assessment of this thing. You are not going to make an assessment or be able to understand this thing unless if you, you compare it to, to um, um, NASA and um, the Russian Space Agency and the Chinese space, space Agency, the information about them and the mathematical fraud based on the Kabbalah is in my book, Ancient Greece Did Not Exist. If you've not read it, you're not going to understand the background and you're just going to waste time making your pathetic um, assumptions. Well, now let's, let's look at the details of them going to the moon. Yes, how long did the landing take? after they arrived in lunar airspace. Oh, it took only about 19 minutes. 19 minutes? Oh, <laughs> ah, well, there's nothing suspicious about this. Now, during those 19 minutes, yes, what was, uh, um, what was going on? Let's say there's a billion people in India watching television. They know that these people are watching. So what, um, what, what happens? It's 19 minutes of suspense that while it's thing, um, people lost um, communication and they don't know what's going on. Yes. Um, so they turn around and say, 
It took 19 minutes and they're trying to give you details. Lunar descent comprised four major phrases. The first, the rough breaking pace began with the spacecraft, blah, 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 30 kilometers above the moon. Suspicious data. So the thing is, they're going to say to you it's 30 kilometers. Yes, but what many people don't know is that 30 kilometers is how many miles? How many miles do you think it is? Oh, uh, since miles are more than kilometers, I would guess it's 19 miles or a mile is longer than a kilometer. Uh, yes, it's 19 miles. Yes. So in many countries, they reported that um, it, 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 did, it took them 19 minutes to descend 19 miles. Now, during those 19 minutes, of course, in India, this is how other people were. Same like in the 60s and 70s in America. Well, um, because, so it, that's why um, I compare history in other parts of the world, because we can't understand Europe and America um, without understanding the other sides of the world, because they are living, um, you know, in societies which are behind ours economically and socially and culturally. Yes. So um, when we have a look at them, so that's what they were doing. Are, are you saying in India Europe. right now is in the American 60s? What about these kind yes. of things? Yes. Yeah, because most people don't have a television set. And so now that people have started to get television sets and mobiles, yes, what they did was, yes, it was 19 minutes of suspense. So people had nothing to do and they could leave the spacecraft for exactly 19 minutes. And this story, um, it's in my books as well, um, the th a similar story. Yes, you won't understand it if you don't read my books. Um, for example, the Alpha and the Amiga cult. It shows that that um, the BBC, which was the big major channel in the 1960s during the death of John F. Kennedy, the BBC stopped for how many minutes, do you think? Or maybe just about 19. Uh, yes, um, it stopped for 19 minutes. So what, what the Indian state did, because many people don't have televisions in big parks, because they've got mega cities, they put these things there so that people can watch it. Yes, so that they can, um, 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 for 19 minutes, the, um, um, people were watching the screen and the screen had nothing to show for exactly 19 minutes. Yes. And so here are the details. And then um, we could see um, on what date um, did this um, Chandra Kayan, it was launched on July the 22nd. Yes. 2019. What is 22 divided? Wait, uh, wait. Yes. 22 divided over seven is pi. That's mm -hmm. one. Yes. And then um, so it arrived on the moon on which date? On August 19th. August the 19th. Ah, yes. So now many people will say there's other numbers. The thing is, I point out 19 because that's the main number. Now, the rest of the numbers, it's like um, the thing is you will have to understand the Kabbalah. Right now, currently I'm writing a book about the Kabbalah. It should be ready next month, Kabbalah Mathematics. And the thing is, um, how much did it cost? Mm, probably... I don't know, 19 in whatever it, it says there. Oh, it, it says, says it even. Page. Okay. Not 19. So, okay, 74 million. All right. But that's another one of 74. these numbers they like to use. 74, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So now 74 is what people don't understand is that it stands for the word God. Yes. In in Hebrew because uh, and in English because G O D O yes. is supposed to be silent. Seven yes. and yes. yes. So mm -hmm. it's seven and four. Yes, D, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So seven and four. Yes. So um, this information is in my books in Alpha and Omega codes and in other books. Yeah. So you can find this information there that's explaining it or otherwise you won't understand this, the 74. So at that time, there was competition in Russia and India. People were watching the television to see who will get to the moon first, their rover or whatever. Yes. So it, it was supposed to be a big competition yes yeah have you seen uh, um oh, i so didn't even were know having... russia did something at the same time i didn't even know that that's crazy yes, okay. they had at the same time ah you know when i said before 30 kilometers it's because i sent one website so here you can see yourself many websites they say um, how did they report it 
that it, it was landing on the moon and yeah, it was and exactly 19 miles mm -hmm. yes so the so the thing is um so they were both launched yes as you, as you notice so um the, um what do you call it yes and um here it is um they advertised it on the media it was competition that the russians were um launched on the 12th and um, the Indians launched on the 19th. Because they launched on the 19th, they won the competition. Yes, <laughs> and uh, yeah, they, uh, they they won the competition. And the Russians, yes, so um, launched on July the 12th, but, but um, the biggest story was their lunar mission crashed. Yes, crashed into the moon on what date? August the what? August 19th. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a shame. It crashed on the 19th. They launched on the 12th and it crashed on the 19th. India launched on the 19th, but they arrived on the 21st. You see? Yes. Mm -hmm. And and then um, it, um, it took them 19 miles to get down and things like this. And so the thing is, um, the thing is what many people don't know is that um, what um, because they're on the moon and the earth is spinning round <laughs> Yes, so they have to, um, you know, like catch up to the moon. Uh, what is the the average uh, orbital speed of the Earth per that's, second? That's just great. It's nineteen miles per second. That's amazing. Ah, <laughs> oh, I'm sure that they got this correct. I'm sure they're not just inventing this data. Yes, and so last year, what do you call it? We had a black moon. Yes. And um, what do you call it? Yes. So they were planning to go to the moon. So they had to delay their mission because they thought there's going to be a black moon. When was this black moon, Raphael? Oh, on May 19. What? Are you sure? <laughs> ah, so so they have to worry. It, it was uh, uh, on the 19th. Yes. So they so they had to worry. So now let's ha have a look at um you know, black moons. Yes. So um, what do you call it? Yes. Um, black moons. Um, often these black moons actually show up. These How often? Black it moons show up once every 33 months. Wow. And what's the connection between 19 and 33? This is described in more detail in my books. I'm not going to go into it here um, because, um, you know, many people, yeah, um, 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 you know, uh, already know this uh, um, from my books and I've mentioned it before, but um, um, 33 is 19 in the third dimension. 19 is in the first dimension in the Kabbalah from the flower of life. The flower of life symbol is used to, um, the tree of life is put inside the flower of life. Yes. And the thing is, um, let me just um, show an example of um, what it's like um, when you put the flower of life in three dimensions, it forms a cube or, or Kaaba or, and, um, um, uh, or a house or the house of God or the Kaaba of Allah or, or, and um, it's um you know um the flower of life um when it comes to life it's actually 33 or known as the 33rd degree yes so um these things you, you won't understand it without reading my books this is in many of my books um in it, for example it's even in my books um napoleon did not exist yes um whereby they invented the history now this is very important because they're using this today for events today they use the same phenomena and the same mathematics in history to invent a lot of the world's history. Yes, and just now, now the thing that is, you, I don't you want to interrupt you too, to too much, but just now that you're showing this and you're showing, I guess this is the Arc de Triomphe, just today, I believe, actually, or something like this, it's India Republic Day or yesterday, and they have this huge parade. Not only do they have similar arches wherever they're going around in New Delhi, but also specifically this year, they particularly invited a French delegation because they're now buying French military equipment. 
And I was just thinking oh, back yes. of our last conversation yeah, I, I, with the, I, I, with the I, I, French. I've been to New Delhi. I just was yeah, thinking of our Arch, last. I've been there. I was just thinking yes, of our last I've conversation with um, uh, regarding the French traders who were setting up uh, somewhere in India, and now again the French and the okay. Indians officially have okay, very good relations. Okay, those things are the small things. Now uh, the big thing is why did they want these people stare? At, at an at a television screen oh, for yes. 19 That's minutes and nothing is happening okay it's a black screen yes basically you know same like your mobile phone it's is a, black. it's a scrying mirror yes, yes. it's a scrying black, mirror black mirror uh, the thing is uh, there's people who are going to come out with all these things and they're going to make assumptions yes so i, I won't let you make that assumption because this is something very big Yes, I'm going to write this in my new book. Yes, I, um, I'm not going to mention it um, here now because that will be giving the secret away. But this is a very big thing that people should, should think about. Why was it like that? And another thing is, yeah, I want you to imagine hundreds of millions of people are watching the television. Just look at that picture. The people are staring. Yes, um, what do you call it at the screen? So now for 19 minutes, there's nothing there. Why are you going to do this to people? Why? What is your objective? Why does this 19 matter? And why do they want you to look at the television screen for 19 minutes? You see? Yes, do you want me to you guess? <laughs> yeah. Yes, no, I'm being serious to you. So people don't understand this. They're walking around with their mobile phone. Yes. So now the thing is when John F. Kennedy was announced dead. Now this is in my book, Alpha and Omega Cults. They did a similar thing. Yes. That what do you call it? The BBC News stopped for how long did it stop? BBC was the main TV channel. In them days, many people don't realize, like today, we didn't have all these television channels like you've got now, uh, um, you know, 10, 20, 30 channels. We didn't have all of these. Why did they? Because it was a big shock. John F. Kennedy is dead. For that time, it seemed like saying, you know, um, World War III has started. It was so big around the world. Why would they do this? They want you to stare at the screen for 19 minutes. Yes, now this is in Alpha and, Demi, um, Alpha and Omega codes. Why do you think they wanted you to do this? You see? And uh, yes, so now um, there is more. It's because the television in them days was a box. Same like the Kaaba is a box, the Muslim Kaaba of Allah, it's a box. Yes, box shaped, yes, yeah. you see? So now um, let me show you um, what you call it. Yes. Have you uh, have you ever been into a 19th century house? Probably. I mean, it, yeah, depends, what what you mean. You... it depends on what you mean by that exactly. But yeah, yeah I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Now um, the thing is, or what do you mean? Now the thing is, yeah, in many 19th century houses, what it was normally above the fireplace. I'm sure you've been into 19th century buildings. Um, well, I know there is a huge a question. There, there is the question with the fireplace, what it actually does. And the mirror, ab you mean above the fireplace? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a mi big mirror. Yes. And many people are questioning how did they keep these buildings um, warm? Very big buildings, many of them. And many people are questioning. Yes. Yes. Um, um, what do you call it? What was the function? of of um the fireplaces but of course many people don't seem to notice that there's a dark mirror there yes and uh, in many uh, just above the fireplace now what normally happens when you go to the um if you're going to be looking at the mirror to do your hair or something and there's a big fire there what's going to happen to you i'm not sure what you mean your trousers will burn. Well, and don't yeah, forget, okay, um, yes. the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you wouldn't yeah, want to stand I'm inside of the fire, I'm of course. Yes. Anyway, this has got something to do with the Kabbalah. And this has got something to do with um, numbers and the forgery of history and to, even to do with your mobile phone. 
Yes, many people don't know these things. Uh, 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 this I won't give away because it, it's going to be in the new book. And um, if anybody hasn't read the previous books, there's no chance they're going to understand anything. No way. Yes, about that. But anyway, let's move on. And um, let's move on. And um, let's talk about um, these um, schools that were in Germany, Poland and Holland. Okay, now. There are some people who are putting comments on. I don't know if they're being idiotic or dumb or stupid on purpose. Some people who are claiming that they read Anatoly Fomenko's books. Oh, he didn't talk about Islam, blah, 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 everything. Yeah, I've told these people go away. Yes, because they're putting comments on. Yes, that are going to totally, yes, totally um, um, mislead people. Now, here is what you call it. I'm just going to say this very fast because I've mentioned it before, but Anatoly Fomenko shows that the Russians and the Slavs, like here, you can read it yourself, the second line. Um, the famous Arab conquest of the world, what does it say? As it Fomenko happened said? in reality, we have thus witnessed that the ancient Russian art moments exhibited in modern museums are covered with Arabic writings for the most part. Yes. So what Fomenko says was that the Orthodox Christians, yes, he talks about them. He says they all had Arabic writings, strange Orthodox Christians. Yes. Oh, here, here is one comment. Yes. Um, I don't know why these people are putting these things on, but um, these statements, they're, um, they're either lies or, or just on purpose, saying what do you call it. Yes, I'm only interested in Fomenko's work and not alternative conclusions. Liar, I've not given a conclusion. Anatoly Fomenko has said, all the majority of the Russian weapons are Arabic writings from Islam and the Quran. Mm -hmm. So this person has just lied. They said, revolves around Orthodox and Catholic sects. Fomenko has said the Orthodox sect used Arabic, had the Quran. He said he never mentioned Islam, that's a lie. In the few works that I read, you've read a few and you didn't read them properly. Yes, he never spent time looking at Buddhism or Hinduism. That's a lie. Yes, where did David get all these ideas? I've just shown you which book. Go and read it and don't come back. Yes, because you are putting these comments there. It's giving me a bad name. Don't and, come back. No, and just, yes? just... Go and watch another channel. <laughs> And, they, and David, yeah, I don't want to waste time. No, yes. We want to move forward because, because there's people who are. Look, I just, here is I just a page want to point Fomenko out that books. you're always showing the proof anyhow, and you're showing the links, and 99% of what you're sharing is public and, uh, information. These people are not even opening the links. They're not looking for history. History is killing people. We can see this in Ghana, uh, Gaza, in, in Karabakh, Armenia, and Azerbaijan. And everyone says it's a matter of time before there's another conflict with Armenia. I mean, these things are sad. People are dying. Yes. Um, look, here it says, what does Fomenko say himself? Could it be that what? There so, are few pieces to mm -hmm. be found in the midst the of the Russian Arabic, Arabic majority. majority. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're all Ar Arabic. Arabic. Yes. And um, 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 what do you call it? He even turned around and shows that even on the, on the halls and other things, gates, many other things, he talks about them in his books. In, in, in the last sentence, the inscriptions we found on both of them are exclusively in Arabic. There isn't a... Read on. Yes, there isn't a single piece of armor with Slavic lettering in sight. Whoa, this is in the Kolomenskoye Museum. Moscow Museum complex of Kolomenskoye. Yes, and people will say, I didn't see the Arabic. It's because there's different styles of Arabic writing. There's the Kufic writing, the Cubic writing, and everything else. The, the last sentence in the bottom, um, first paragraph, he, he specifically says, Fomenko's words, yet we find them covered in Arabic script, Arabic writing. writing. And he says, this makes the plot thicken even more. He's saying this is a conspiracy, a plot. Yes? Mm -hmm. so, so what do you call it? Yes? And um, uh, the thing is, now somebody's going to say, that doesn't mean nothing. Okay, I prepared for all these idiots and liars and dummies. Yes, they're doing this on purpose. 
I'm and I'm not looking here to preach Islam. I'm I'm talking history. The Orthodox Russians. What does he What does he say here? He said, we have just seen that the Orthodox Russians, the Orthodox Russians had kept the custom of decorating their weapons with Arabic writings up until the middle of the 17th century. Yes, actually, um, it was still done after that. But the Arabic writing had Slavic words mixed in until after the 18th century. Fomenko goes on the transition period in the 18th century, and then we start to see Slavic coming in. What the hell is going on? So Arabic writing, so this Orthodox religion, yes, was nothing but original Islam. That's what it is. And Fomenko describes it. So I've not invented it. So these people who are claiming, um, you know, their exact words are saying, to be frank, I'm only interested in AF's works and not the alternative conclusions drawn from David's theory. Liar. I haven't said a theory. I'm quoting Fomenko. That's a lie. It's a liar. All these people, please go away. Yes, it's because you are misleading other people. If you don't have an agenda, if you want to stay, come back and make another comment and say, sorry, I was wrong. Don't put a pathetic excuse saying, I thought this, I thought that. No, you're giving people a bad name. Yes, a liar is a liar. Yes, it's when they mix certain truths with lies. Yes. So um, what does Fomenko say about these orthodox? Uh, what do you do in a mosque? They read quotes from the Quran. Everybody knows this. Yes. Let me just, just show you what they do in a mosque today. Yes. The Muslims, yes, they stand and they, uh, and they pray in mosques and they read quotations from the Quran. Everybody knows this. Yes. It's a fact. Yes. So we see Muslims... Um, today, what they do, they stand in a mosque and they read quotations from the Quran. So now let me um, just find um, um, what, you, what you call it, yes? And um, let, me, let me send an example because somebody is going to say, I'm inventing this. I am not um, inventing this. Fomenko says this himself. Yes, so Fomenko points, what he points out, even I found a similar history. Um, here is um, 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 what I've just found. I've just done a Google search and I tried to find a mosque in Russia, but instead um, they, they've um, shown Ukraine and certain mosques in Russia. But I'm still, um, I'll do a screenshot and I'll send you this from um, Ukraine. Same thing. Yes. So here we have, um, you know, Ukrainians. Yes. Um, uh, uh, um, uh, there are Ukrainian Muslims, you know, there's Tadars in Ukraine also. But the thing is, um, you know, of course, they're showing these people um, fighting for the Ukrainian military, you know, fighting against the Russians. So um, um, this is Ukrainian um, soldiers who are Muslims and they're praying. Yes. So I've just sent you this. So what they do, they don't have a paper because there is something something I found strange about this Quran. Um, I don't know how, but the people managed to memorize it. Whereas we see in, in churches, they have to hold the Bible and they have to hold the book. And in synagogues, they are even at the Wailing Wall. You have to hold the hold, um, you know, religious books. They're difficult to memorize. But these Muslims mysteriously can memorize the Quran. Uh, I found this um, amazing as well. So now the thing is for Menko himself. Yeah, what he says is that these Orthodox Christians in Eastern Europe Yes, who are fighting against the Catholics. Um, what are they reading quotations from in these Orthodox churches? Mm -hmm. Wait, let me send you the page. Um, I've not sent you the page. Let me send it to you. It's because um, let's find out what these Orthodox people are, because this person has said Fomenko spoke about the Orthodox Christians. Yes, and he described described and he said that the orthodox religion is a fake. Yes. Uh, and um, what, how does he describe it? The last sentence, this is from Fomenko's book. Yes. So here he says, the word, the word Allah, as used by the Russian church in the 16th and even the 17th century, alongside the quotations from the Quran. So they're reading, they're reading quotations from the Quran when they're praying these Orthodox Christians, 
and they're using the word Allah and they're decorating their sword, swords and all their weapons, all of them. Yes, with Arabic. What is Orthodox Christianity at this time? What religion is it? As well, sounds like Islam. And, we're, and um, uh, I've, uh, we mentioned in previous videos, not sounds like Islam, it is. We can't even find a Russian Bible until the 18th and right. 19th century. Yes. Even the Ostrog Bible and the printing story sounds like a joke. Uh, uh, the, the joke history, that it, even when they sent it in the 18th century, it's not complete. And the Jesuits who are printing in Ostrog, yes, and there was a Tatar fort there. And then they're claiming, oh, no, there was a Jewish printing press here. And we can't even find a Jewish population there that's capable enough to print so many books. And the history of the Pale Settlement, the entire history is a fraud. Yeah, Fomenko points it out and he talks about it. So that person who's made the statement saying that Fomenko, yes, did not talk about it, yes, uh, um, did not mention these um, Muslims, it's just a lie. Oh, Fomenko shows that the entire Orthodox religion, these Slavs, Eastern Europe, the entire Orthodox sect was Islam. And he said, Fomenko never mentions Islam. That is a lie. That statement is a lie. In a court of law, that is a lie. Yes, simple as. Now, I warn people that anybody who reads comments to know from now on that there are people who are telling lies. They're going to say it's a mistake. It doesn't matter it's a mistake if they're going to say this. It's because people at the time, some people will not come back and read comments again. So the thing is, please be careful of comments. There's people there that are just writing any garbage down. I've noticed this. And I've noticed there's some people who are even saying, hey, you're David. Oh, I'm David. I, uh, I just think these people are mental. Yes. <laughs> people are yeah. very creative, David, you know, you know. Not just creative. Like, just uh, like, just uh, like the Jesuits, they're something also very creative, you know. <laughs> there's something wrong with them. Yes. And the thing is, um, the thing is, what I can see from what Fomenko has shown is because if anybody's trying to say I'm pushing a religious agenda, I'm not. What Fomenko has shown is that Europe had Islam even before the existence of the Quran. So, so the thing is, you can do good things with or without the Quran. Yes. So it's like um, um, somebody spoke to me the other day and they pointed, the, pointed this out to me and said, David, um, tell people this um, because, because I've mentioned Yes, Fomenko has mentioned the, the Quran and he's mentioned history just because Fomenko points out history and he shows it with evidence. That doesn't mean Fomenko's work is the is the book of God or anything. I am not going to say that the Quran or the Bible or Fomenko or anything else is the word of God. I'm just looking at the history. I and I found that Fomenko's version of history, what he points out, he shows evidence for it. And the, and um, what I found that what Fomenko shows and what I found in my research, the Quran has this history. I couldn't find it in the Bible. The Bible has got um, additions and subtractions, which they've done mathematically and astrologically based on the Kabbalah and in mathematics. It's just simple mathematics. So therefore, um, the Quran has got more correct history. Now, about the religion, I'm not going to push a religion to anybody that if you read Fomenko, that um, I'm not going to tell you that Fomenko is a prophet or anything. I'm just going to say, look at the history. Now, if you're going to read the Quran, I'm going to say, look at the history. It tells you that the other side is lying and they invented history and they told lies because a lot of the history we have um, throughout the world is based on religion, like the Crusades, the followers of Jesus Christ, Christianity, Islam, a lot, of, um, and they're saying we've been fighting for centuries until the 19th century, and it was based on religion. Yes, until the modern secular states in the 20th century. So now, because of this, if you want to look at the other side of history, I've said you can look at Fomenko or you can look at the Quran. Now, the rest of it, human man-made religions or even spirituality, I'm not pushing any religion or any spirituality or anything. I'm not interested. Uh, if you've got any hist historical facts or mathematics, I'm interested. Any religious agendas, I'm not interested. And if you want to do good things, you can do it with the Bible or without the Bible. If you want to do a good thing, you can do it just because the Quran says it, or you can do it because your heart is good, because you want to do a good thing. Yes, let me just give, people... give one example as I'm mentioning this, because I've been watching a lot of, you know, Israel Palestine documentaries and all of this and you have people on all sides and then you have this one rabbi 
who you know wants to help certain Palestinians, and at the same time, you know, you have different rabbis who would probably claim, oh, because the book says this and that, this land only belongs to us or something like this. And then I realized the same is with Christians, same as with Muslims. It maybe doesn't even matter so much what is written in these books, and it maybe matters a lot more how people really are in their hearts and then yeah. they will find any excuse in the book to either do evil or do good but it actually right. really depends on how they what yeah, their own want, attitude so, is the yeah. main point of this art, you've you've said a very, very great point now if people don't read my book matrix codes they're not going to understand this yes for men pointed this out and so have i in my book um, matrix codes i've made this very simple now the thing is i even had um Rouse with Muslims about this, yes, because the thing is, um, what do you call it? The Quran itself, the Quran itself actually says.